How's it going everyone, Darren here and welcome to CodeGaff. Before we start off this week's devlog episode, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who voted on the Unity input system issue from last week. It's one of the most recently reported issues under the input system package and thanks to you it's also the one with the most votes. Now all we need to do is wait and pray that Unity addresses it as soon as possible. If you haven't voted on the issue yet and you'd like to get involved like the epic community member that I know you are, then there's a link in the description so that you can vote on it. And with that out of the way, let's get started. It is currently Monday evening and thanks to all of the amazing feedback that you guys gave me on the new Skelly graphics from last week, I've realized that he still needs a bit of work. A few of you pointed out that he now looks like he's wearing a skirt and that his legs are a bit too skinny and too far apart from one another. And honestly, if it wasn't for you guys, I don't think I'd have noticed this at all. But now that I do, I cannot unsee it. So it's time to sort that out. So I went back into Photoshop and after probably two hours or more, I realized that I still suck at drawing feet because I spent ages trying to come up with something that looked decent and just failed miserably for the most part. I I eventually settled on these bad boys though, and honestly I think they turned out extremely average. Nah, I'm just joking, I actually think they're pretty cool and fit the Skelly's overall aesthetic quite well. Here's a side by side so you can see the difference. I still kinda like the peg leg idea though to be honest, maybe I'll reintroduce it somewhere down the line but I think for now it's time for bed cause this took me way longer than it should have and I've got work tomorrow. It is now Tuesday evening, I've just gotten home from work and during the drive home I had a groundbreaking idea. I should change the Skelly's colour palette to grayscale so that I can make colour changes from within Unity directly instead of having to open up Photoshop and change all the layer colours there manually. Okay, okay, I swear after this I will chill out on the graphics because this is not an R channel. For now. <laughs> So I opened up Photoshop and started changing the body parts colors. I decided to leave the head as it was though since it was already mostly grayscaled anyways. And once I finished I ended up with this white Power Ranger looking beast. I then opened up Unity and after it re-imported my asset changes I could see my white Power Ranger Skelly. Oh and he looks so good compared to the old Skelly man, look at that, that's crazy. And thanks to these changes I can easily transform standard Skelly into Robin Hood Skelly, Banana Skelly. Halloween pumpkin skelly. Barney the dinosaur. Okay, okay, I'm having way too much fun with this, I know, but you can see how powerful these changes were. I decided in the end to just turn him into raggedy peasant skelly because in my rough mental plan, I want him to start out at the bottom of the demonic food chain and looking quite weak. So brown and grey it is. And with that done, I called it a night and headed to bed, planning to have a fresh start on actual game dev tomorrow and not just art. So it is now Wednesday and I decided to take my new and improved Skelly into Unity and get cracking on this game. Except his animations were completely broken thanks to the major graphical changes that I've made. These problems in particular are occurring because the sprites that represent each body part have had their pivot positions changed, some intentionally by me and some unintentionally due to body parts being renamed. Either way, this was a serious pain to deal with but it taught me a very valuable lesson. Be happy with my graphics before making animations, or at least ones that are in any way complex. The idle animation didn't take too long to fix but the walk animation was a right pain. I decided to just scrap the whole thing and redo it since I was never really completely happy with it anyways. In the original the Skelly's feet would slide a lot so I wanted to try to tackle that problem while I was remaking this animation. And here's how it looks now. I'm a lot happier with this one over the previous one no doubt. You might also notice that Skelly does a little angry frown now when he walks too. I think it's a really cool little detail that brings him to life a bit more and kinda adds to his character. It is now Saturday and although it seems that I've skipped two days of the week I assure you that I didn't and that I was working very hard, just mentally rather than physically in this case. I've been mostly thinking about the architecture of my game, specifically from a combat perspective seeing as that's what I'm working on right now. Yesterday I implemented multiple approaches but ultimately scrapped them all due to not being well rounded enough to meet my needs. There was usually one or two downfalls that would require me to put hacky code in place which I just did not want to do especially this early in development. All I can say is is, good thing I changed my upload schedule to Sundays because you guys will be so pissed if I finish this devlog right now. <laughs> so after multiple iterations, here's what I eventually settled on. 
When I want something to be able to attack in my game, I will give it an attacker component. I then set the values on it that I need, though the defaults are good enough in most cases. Next, I go to the attack animation and fire off animation events for when I want to scan for collisions and when I want to stop scanning for collisions. This allows me to easily track anything that's attackable that were hit during the attack animation. When I want something to be attackable in my game, and for the sake of a demo, I'll create some dummy test object, I will give it a health component and assign the relevant values. As you can see, the health component fires events for when it gets damaged and healed, and also has custom thresholds that can be set up so that once the health is damaged and goes below the given thresholds, the associated events are fired. This can be used for lots of cool stuff, but for now, let's just use it to kill this thing. I've created a destructible component which literally just calls the unity destroy method on the game object. Let's look at how that ties in here. When the threshold of zero is reached, tell the destructible script to destroy the attached game object. Simple enough. So let's test it out. Keep an eye on the current health value of this wonderful treasure chest over here as I attack it. Each hit should drop its health by one, but when it gets to zero, it dies. And there we go. It took me all of 30 seconds to create a new object that can be killed by attacks. Now this is the kind of system that I like. Of course, having literally just implemented it, there are still little things that need to be cleaned up, renamed, and probably even deleted. But the important thing here is that the architecture is designed well enough so that new functionality, or in this case, newly killable objects, are easy to add in and don't require hooking up to dozens of other components. So that's all I managed to get done this week. My plans for next week are, hmm, well, I don't know actually, I have to plan a new sprint on Azure DevOps. Thanks for reminding me. I'll probably refine this combat system a bit more and perhaps get to work on some basic enemy AI so that the hedge dog can attack me without me having to press spacebar. So thank you very much for watching and I will catch you next week. Oh, and if you're watching this and you're not already a subscriber to my channel, then you should subscribe now and hit that little belly button so that you can stay notified of my latest uploads. Cheers. <laughs>